May the 2nd, we are being told that we are destroying the planet. It's difficult to believe that when you look round. It's absolutely beautiful. The trees behind me now are all in bloom. There's pinks, whites, greens. All the leaves on the trees are young. We walk in the fields and there are lambs about now. And only a few weeks ago, and I said this the other day, only a few weeks ago, the ground was absolutely frozen solid. We were all wearing big coats and hats. It was freezing. Hoarfrost, mist coming out of our mouths as we breathed, and now it's mild and warm. Beautiful leaves, beautiful blossoms. Young about. I put a camera out the other day and got young foxes playing. Go to my channel and have a look. I can hear the breeze in the trees behind me then, just a little burst. What a beautiful sound and we're told that we're destroying the planet and like I say it's difficult to believe and I don't believe we are destroying the planet. I think that's a load of absolute waffle. We may be destroying ourselves <clears throat> but we will not destroy the planet. Who do we think we are? This has happened before civilization, the end of the dinosaurs. Things will come and things will go. We will die off and another species will evolve because of our own stupidity. But the planet will go on. We will not destroy the planet. We might scar it a little bit, but it'll pick up once we're gone and out of the way. Who do we think we are? In the scheme of things, I don't know what, what the, the analogy actually is accurately, but they say, think of the length, the, the time of the planet as a 12 hour clock. We've been here a couple of seconds before midnight. What significance do you think we've had in the scheme of things? Absolutely none. So do our best, that's all we can do. We're a tiny nation. We contribute, I think it's 2% to global warming. There's nothing we can do if we did the very best we can do. There are countries like India and China, South and, and, and continents and places like South America that they're not going to change the ways. All we can do is do our very, very best and then we can hold our heads up. But we won't be here forever. But while we're here, enjoy it. This is beautiful. There's hardly anyone about. I can see a couple of people with a dog in the distance. But behind me, Molly is playing. He loves this temperature just when it's a bit cool. The trees are in bloom and in leaf. The birds are tweeting away like mad. Sky is cloudy. We have had some beautiful days lately. And we will have some more beautiful days lately. And we've all got to get out and enjoy them. I love it. I love it. Don't worry too much about global warming. Don't let it get to you like a lot of people do. Especially the kids. The word about the world they're inheriting. We can only do our best. We will do our best. The younger generations say that we're destroying the planet for them. <sighs> Progress. We want all these things. We want the mobile phones. We want the technology. We want this. It all comes at a price. And I think we are now beginning to realise that it's a great price. But we, in this country, can do our level best. But in the meantime, don't let it get to you. Don't have angst. Don't worry about it. Get out in the countryside. Enjoy it. Have your senses aware of every sound and every smell and every sight. Because you don't know you might get run over by a bus on the way home. So don't worry about it. Enjoy it. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. We're walking down one of the main paths in this woodland now. And I can't describe how green it is. It is so green and it, because it's young foliage, it's this bright, almost iridescent green. And it's dotted all around by bluebells, which look absolutely fabulous. But the green is so green 
the light kind of seemed to soak into the air. So the air itself has a green tinge to it, this beautiful light green tinge. And it's only a few weeks ago when there wasn't a leaf on these trees and they were all bare and brown. And now everywhere is completely green. I can see a squirrel running up a tree. Molly will probably see a few squirrels while we're walking down here and start chasing them around like a lunatic. The bird song is constant now. You just stop and the trees over here and the trees over here. And I heard the woodpecker a few seconds ago, we may hear him again, somewhere over to my right. But it's constant. So what you've got is the sound of like a small, almost a zephyr, with the woodpecker again, almost a zephyr of wind blowing through the trees, through the leaves and the birds singing. Fabulous. Did you hear the woodpecker then? somewhere over there. We saw him the other day, which is a bit cool. And there you go, woodpecker. We've just taken a minute to come off the path and enter this lovely little woodland. A lot of the trees here are still quite bare. I think a lot of them are dead, <laughs> to tell you the truth. But it is a lovely spot. It's a way nobody comes in here. So we've got it all to ourselves. And it's lovely because behind me in the background, the ground rises up. That's going up to Winter Hill. Sorry, Rivington Pike. And then Winter Hill is beyond that. And it's great because it's the, the, the greenery just goes and then continues up and up and up with the sky above it. Fabulous, Not, nothing encroaching on it, no buildings power lines, anything. And it's beautiful in here. We can just feel the crunching of the leaves under underfoot and patches of green. So we've got the, the leaves, the brown leaves, last year's leaves are all over the ground. And then you come to this patches where the light has come through. There's like a little cathedral above us. There's a, 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 a like this canopy of branches and then you come to an area where there's a slight gap and in that slight gap where the sun's coming through then you will get lovely patches of green. That was a lovely woodland but we had to come out because no, far you, no matter how far you are off the beaten track there's always somebody walking about and there was a woman there, well no I couldn't see her, two dogs came up, two huge labs, a brown one and a black one, with the hackles up and started standing over Molly and growling. It was quite terrifying, so I managed to kind of back Molly out of it. I could hear a woman shouting in the background, a long way away, 100 yards or so away. We managed to get out, the dogs disappeared, and lo and behold, within about 10 seconds, I hear them fighting with another dog, and this woman shouting and screaming. Luke, if you're going to get a dog, train it. Don't get a dog and then let it run wild attacking other dogs because eventually nothing will happen to you but you'll have to have that dog put down and that's not the dog's fault that's your fault. You should be then be locked up in prison for a long time if not forever. Dogs are dogs. It's up to us to keep them safe, to look after them. Molly can be a bit grumpy sometimes and she's in her old age and occasionally she will bark at a dog but I'll tell you what, it only takes one word from me to stop her. There's no harm in her anyway, she's not big enough. She would never ever be aggressive to another dog. She just likes being friendly. But then again, that's it. You can't just let your dog be friendly because you don't know what the other dog is. They might be reactive. They might, you don't know what's happened to them in their life. So don't let your dog run up to another dog and start barking at it and say, well, you only want us to play because the other dog might be terrified. Just think, not enough people think. Oh, it's beautiful out here now. I'm walking through the grass and the grass, the turf is, it's long, the grass is long and lush and very green. And the ground underneath it is soft and it's like walking across a mattress. And then we've got like a pine tree behind us. And if you look at it, it's got the new growth and there's a lot of them around here. I can see them, I'm looking round now and the new growth. 
this green, bright green on top of the darker green of last year's growth. Remarkable nature, isn't it? Ha, there's the woodpecker again. Nature is remarkable. Nature's a wonderful thing. We are only here for a short period of time. Mankind itself won't be here forever. Maybe we're just on living on borrowed time, making that time shorter for ourselves. But we as individuals are only here for a very short time, three score year and 10, getting longer, four score year and five now, I would say, on average. But it's still only a tiny little time. When you think about it, a lot of the time when you're around, you a child, a kid, an adolescent, it's not till you get into your late teens, your twenties, that you will probably start appreciating the world around you. Because before then, there's too much you're learning, there's too much experience to soak up. All is new. It's only when you've soaked up a lot of experiences and you begin to slow down and plateau out a little bit that you start appreciating things. And as you get older, you can really appreciate the wilds and getting up onto the wild fells and I've done all that and the hills. Then you get to my age, you're only 70. And you have to slow down a little bit, but you can still appreciate it. And then as, you, as, as we all get older, I will probably not be as ambulant in a few years as I am now. And then you slow down and then you probably can't get out. So then you take your nature by watching it on the telly. So basically, you're talking 50 years where you can actually get out, half a century, no time at all, 50 winters, 50 summers to experience something new in every one of those. Even at the end of your time in the countryside looking around, there will still be so much you haven't experienced, no matter how hard you try. So just get out while you can. Get out and appreciate it while you can. I'm telling you now. You can thank me later. Molly and I are going to disappear now into another woodland, out of that woodland, into a grassed area, and then we're just going to keep wandering around and wandering around until we disappear. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, if you like our channel, please subscribe, smash the like button for all the other content, go and look at some of our other videos. I've started another channel. Because I'm a bit of a political animal, I love politics, I love, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm very outspoken, I can't keep my mouth shut, I'm for always forever falling out with people because I've got such an opinion. And it's called, He Said What? It's, there's only one video up, it can be quite controversial, you will probably fall out with me if you go and watch it, you'll think I'm an idiot, but it's there, have a look, and in the meantime, listen to that. Have a beautiful week. Listen to that. See you on the flip kids. Peace and love.